So now that I'm done with a quick introduction to Nolscape, I'm excited to get into the second uh, segment, which is all about gaining some industry perspective on why database decision making is important in today's context, right? And for this, I'd love to uh, introduce Goda Ramkumar to you. Uh, she is the AVP of data science at Swiggy. Uh, if you look at her profile, um, you know, this is so stellar that uh, I'll need a lot more time to explain this, but I'm going to make it uh, short. Uh, she works as AVP Data Science uh, for Marketplace Fulfillment, Core Logistics, and uh, Delivery Experience Solutions at Swiggy. So if you're getting your food on time, folks, uh, you have Goda to thank for um, through Swiggy. And uh, she also oversees a data science charter for delivery optimization. Uh, time prediction, serviceability, service recovery, and customer care. That's uh, quite a lot on her plate. Uh, prior to this at CXXO, she want, uh, wanted to level the playing field for Indian female CEOs, um, developing uh, three primary pillars of capital, community, and coaching. And prior to that, she was a general manager of data science at X to 10X Technologies, where uh, she was helping the entire startup ecosystem uh, develop this um, you know, data science function as a capability. And prior to that, she was a principal data scientist at Ola, where she was driving predictive models. And she has helped you um, get your cabs, and she's also helping you get your food on time. So thanks, Goda. Uh, we are super excited to have you uh, on this product launch event. Same here, Rajiv. I mean, thanks for that introduction. Of course, people will be if it doesn't come on time as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, so we will get started with a quick audience poll. So the format is in the next few minutes, um, we will have a couple of questions on each slide. The first question is for uh, the audience. Uh, Raghav from my team is already flashing the first question for you. Uh, please go ahead and answer this question. This is for all the uh, audience members here. Is your organization effectively using the analyzed data to achieve business outcomes? Please go ahead and answer that question. We'll quickly see the results as well. Is your organization effectively using the data that's been analyzed to achieve business outcomes? Okay, we should have decent number of responses by now. Raga, would you like to show the results? All right, so um, here are the results. 64% of the audience um, seems to think that their organization is effectively using the analyzed data to achieve business outcomes. No is 15%, neutral is 21%. So 64 is a pretty healthy number. Goda, does that take you by surprise or did you expect this outcome? Uh, I expected it more in the 50s, but okay. this, this is a pleasant uh, surprise. Um, okay. One sure. thing is, I also think uh, the answer to this depends on where the company is in terms of its evolution, you know, from a small to a medium to a big company. So it, it varies based on that. Got it. Okay. So the question for you, Goda, is uh, in your experience, how does database uh, decisions impact business outcomes? Uh, can you share any success stories, uh, maybe in your current organization or in your experience in the past? How was data being used? Uh, to drive business outcomes and drive revenue or uh, cost optimization, some business outcome. Can you talk about some success stories? Right, right. So broadly, I have seen two kinds of decision making uh, impacted by data, right? One is like very strategic decision making, you know, should we even get into a market? You know, should we start this new category? And uh, a lot of times decisions made based a more re very recent one is, you know, when Swiggy was expanding its grocery arm and we were opening up several, you know, pods and dark stores across cities, we had to identify where to open them, right? So very strategic decisions, analyzing the demand patterns, then that has really paid off, you know, where we are seeing very good growth on the grocery side, right? Uh, and very tactical decisions also have seen uh, where they have been taken based on data. Um, I think that something that would touch card with a lot of people here would be when the COVID lockdown started and everything we had to uh, depend on uh, you know, hyperlocal deliveries in some way. And we could not allow the delivery partners to crowd at the restaurants. So we had to use data and predictions to say, you know, this is the limit and how can we kind of manage our orders in a way where we can prevent crowding at the restaurants for social distancing, right? So 
definitely impactful outcomes uh, coming based on uh, data. And I, I am a huge promoter of, uh, you know, using database decisions. And, and every year I look forward to uh, Swiggy's, I think, annual report where they say biryani is the, the most favorite food across many cities in India. That's, that's always interesting to see. But biryani has been number one for many years, I think. Um, right, moving uh, further along, we'll ask uh, the next question to, uh, to the audience. Uh, who is responsible for building a data-centric culture in an organization? Is it the leadership team? functional departments or team managers? Who is responsible for building a data-centric culture in an organization? Leadership team, functional departments, team managers. I guess you could add the data team itself uh, to this mix. All right, the results are coming up. All right, so leadership team, 58%, functional department, 17 team managers, 25. Goda, uh, you're a data scientist. You're looking at data in front of you. What are you, what are you uh, inferring from this? I was expecting a fourth option, all of them. But uh, of course, I think the root, uh, you know, the audience are bang on that the root starts with the leadership team. And that's how the culture is driven because data centric culture is a belief that data is telling us something to act upon and that belief is what translates to business impact got it got it and there is um, a funny acronym that does the rounds on social media it goes by hippo hippo uh, seems to suggest the way we all make decisions in organizations it stands for highly paid person's opinion uh, right so this is the leadership team saying okay we all are going north uh, right and everybody goes in that direction and uh, last I checked, this uh, hippo is already um, outdated. It, it is replaced by zebra. Zebra is uh, zero evidence, but really arrogant, um, right? So, so that's uh, about how we make decisions and the cultural impact of uh, uh, you know, using data in our decision making. So in your uh, experience, um, Goda, so what are the key challenges you faced while building a data-centric culture in your organization. So in, in a way, I think you have a little bit of an advantage here because you are with digital native companies. Uh, can you also uh, think in terms of companies that are more traditional, what sort of um, you know roadblocks or challenges would they be facing? Right. Um, so I did, when I was working as part of x 2 10 I did interact with you know more traditional businesses as well, though they were startups, but not very digital businesses, right? I think one of the primary challenges is I like I touched upon uh, the belief or uh, the intuition of what works right in a lot of traditional organizations, there have been things that have been working for long enough right and hence to prove that there is more potential of doing it very differently goes into a kind of a chicken and egg where you need data to prove that it can do wonders. But to collect the data, you need to invest in collecting the right data, right? So that is definitely a primary challenge of investing in the right digital modes to collect the right data to for you to even see the potential. And uh, definitely the second challenge is because of the hype around data, uh, having uh, not having the right expectation in terms of uh, how fast do you expect data to change things for your organization, right? I would say it's like a baby that takes nine months of gestation period to kind of have the right impact for your organization. There need to be a certain level of patience to invest and look. Yeah, uh, Goza, there was a little bit of a pause uh, on your side. I, I don't know if I caught the last one. Uh, you're saying, you know, patience for getting the results, right? So it may not be overnight um, that you start to see value. So there is a fundamental belief that is needed um, with value coming out of data, uh, right? And, and there is a chicken and egg problem because you need to have that minimum viable experiment to showcase value uh, before investments can happen and other things can happen. Right. So you start building it out incrementally, I suppose. Right. So is, is the whole idea of agile then uh, connected to this because you're not able to build the uh, your ultimate vision on day one. So, and you're learning as you are building this. So are agile and data-centric culture, building uh, a data-centric culture, are they sort of 
going hand in hand in organizations so i think the data centric culture like i said if you have the belief you will invest in that minimum viable product to see the value of it right so it starts with the belief it has to go into the agile mode to see the benefit and wait for it to scale and have the right impact i think those are the three steps got it got it wonderfully put thank you uh the next question is this is for the audience do you think there is a gap between the potential of data analytics and the business value it can generate or it can create in your organization so majority of us said you know 64 if i remember right said uh, we are doing fine with respect to data right um is there a gap between doing proper analytics and creating business value in your organization Let's see what comes out of this one. All right, so eighty-three percent uh, in the audience seem to think uh, you know there is a gap. So now let's uh, deep dive into that aspect, I guess. So um, you know, as you mentioned, Goda, there is a belief element here. There is a mindset element here, without which this never takes off, right? So what are some, I guess, mindsets, skill sets, and capabilities that individuals, managers, and leaders need? to make data based decisions and this is the all of the above right so here we are not just saying leaders this is everyone in the organization what sort of mindsets skill sets and capabilities do we need right right also i'm i'm putting the primary hygienic factor of data being accessible and discoverable as a given right if that exists then across you know leaders managers uh, one thing is to kind of have a metric thinking in terms of you know how do we assess that we are doing a certain thing well and how can we isolate and define a metric for us to track that right and if at all that metric is moving in a certain direction what are the questions we need to ask to get to the root cause of you know what are the actionables that uh, are coming out of it right so this basic level of metric thinking is definitely something that needs to be there across right from leadership to you know somebody who is even developing uh, that metric and second thing is definitely some level of uh, uh, what we call as data literacy to be able to you know access that yourself you know query and look at some reports yourself and be able to use that as you know the size of price of initiatives you want to take up and convince people in the room not because you know the hippo or the zebra but because you know you have proof of the pudding in some way right so i think these two skill sets i would call out at, at the top awesome so just to summarize metric uh, thinking and going beyond the hippo or zebra the ability to influence people on on uh, evidence yeah all right wonderful so uh, thank you goda for those insights uh, very sharp very focused and hit the nail uh, all three answers thank you so much for that uh, so now at this point in time i'd like to uh, invite kalyan i'm sure he is uh, itching to uh, showcase and show off our product and incidentally the the storyline for this uh, simulation is also based on uh, cloud kitchen so goda you will find that uh, interesting so i'm going to stop sharing my screen and over to kalyan thanks rajiv uh, give me a moment i'll just share my screen okay hope you able to see this yeah okay okay Uh, thanks, Rajiv. Thanks, Goda, for the great inputs. I think that really paves the way for showcasing a simulation and probably in a bit much better light. I would say. So, what we'll cover in the next uh, let's see, twenty odd minutes would be uh, we'll give you a quick introduction to what the simulation is about, what are the various outcomes from a learning standpoint as well as a business standpoint. Uh, how how do you consume this? How do you take this uh, back into your organization in terms of the use cases? What are the various competencies that are covered in the simulation as well? and then we'll show the exciting part of giving a brief preview of what a simulation and, and what's that instant report that we get at the end of this uh, uh, gameplay okay. so for the i do uh, let me just jump into the uh, thing right now what the simulation uh, primarily caters towards and, and and for people who probably have not been uh, part of the session the other day just to give them a glimpse of what experiential learning methodology typically covers uh, in simple terms it's just It's just replicating what you would probably see in a real world, creating a virtual environment, 
putting you in a particular role and giving you certain objectives to meet. That's the, uh, I would say, a standard approach to experiential learning methodology, and we call it uh, simulation-based learning. Now, this particular product specifically uh, focuses on bridging the gap between business and data. Like how, do you, how do you combine this? The three core questions that we were looking at it uh, earlier while Rajiv and Goda was talking about. So primarily to ensure that you make effective decisions based on the uh, data, that's what we focus upon. It'll also help participants to kind of understand how do you leverage uh, analytics, various analysis, uh, I would say in terms of approaches to analysis, uh, deriving insights out of it, and eventually kind of ensuring that the decision making is a lot more effective. Now, what are the various outcomes we covered? And like I spoke earlier, you can look at it from a learner standpoint, you can also look at it from a organization standpoint. Eventually the organization impact is a lot more important as well. Right? So from a learner, he'll, he'll start to appreciate what this decision making is about, what the database decision making is about. So kind of understanding those gaps, identifying those gaps and bridging those gaps between business and data. Uh, it also gives him an oversight on to how do you leverage a better analysis or some sort of basic analytical approaches to create these insights to derive those outcomes. From a business uh, angle, very clearly, it's what we spoke about to build that mindset of culture uh, pertaining to a data-centric organization. That's something which uh, effectively is the, I would say, the stronghold of it. And because of that, obviously, there's an impact on the business performance and the outcomes. Uh, it also helps them create various models in terms of navigating through these challenges uh, to make those decisions a lot more effective. Right? So these are these are what caters to the learning and the business outcomes. Okay, now that we understood what the product is about, what are the various outcomes? Obviously, the next immediate question would be how do you, how do I take it to my organization? Right? How do I put it into use? So some of the basic use cases, pretty self-explanatory, would be to kind of create this as part of certain programs inbuilt. Can be a data literacy program through the organization, which can be at a transitional level or transformation level. Uh, like we've seen in the survey as well, it's, it's not specific to a certain level or it's not specific to a certain function, right? Every function has their own set of decisions that they need to make. So it can pan across different functions, at the same time across multiple levels, not just the managers or the leadership team. Like Goda was saying, it, it does spread across the entire organization. So each of the teams have their respective responsibilities in terms of taking those decisions based on data. Now, those are some practical use case of how you can put this into uh, application in the organization. Uh, while Nonscape has various other suite of products as well, and uh, in the wider portfolio, across the data, uh, I would say data series of products that we, we look at it, uh, we, can, we can work with organizations to create a possible journey or a possible kind of a transition or a transformational outcome for the organizations. Now, this, what we're showing here on the screen is a sample journey where you're talking about the fundamentals of data storage and the processing, the pre of all that you do before you get into the leveraging the analysis pieces. And then we obviously look, and look at the product that we're going to showcase in a while. We also, also have another product that we've launched a few months ago, which is primarily catering to data visualization and interpretation. So you look at those, how do you represent and interpret data is also one of the key aspects. Now this along can go with the last element, which is mostly around the, the making decision making a lot more effective. So we can stitch a particular entire learning path for the, uh, the learners, which can, which can become a lot more effective in terms of that learning aspect and the impact on the business as well. Now, what are some of the concepts that are covered in this product? So every simulation of us has a kind of a research tried and tested approach, uh, uh, which we use in the, in, the, in the product as well, which, which forms the basis for uh, getting an open idea on whether it's a good uh, decision, whether it's a bad decision, whether it's the right approach, wrong approach. Uh, and, and one of the things that we've uh, looked at from a framework standpoint is this Glamour. I'd like to thank Goda for that as well. Uh, so Glamour is, as, as the name such is pretty straightforward, it, it's primarily catering towards your goal. Uh, the first aspect of it being you try to understand, I mean, even before you try to solve a problem, try to understand what that problem is, uh, define it in the right sense. What are the various analysis or analytical approaches that you can take to tackle that problem? Eventually, you're going to the last part, which is around the metric-based decision, which is what are those insights or the decisions that you need to collect and basically keep track of, track of it. Now, this translates into the simulation of the product into four sets of competencies, uh, definition and an approach where it caters to identifying the problem and analyzing it. And last two aspects inside, so in terms of insight and outcome, 
how to derive those insights and eventually have an impact on the business outcomes. Okay? Quite straightforward, but how the whole simulation pans out is through giving them those multiple scenarios and challenges, uh, catering to those competencies as well, which will eventually look at how they're able to overall uh, kind of solve this problem and eventually become a lot more effective. I will jump into the demo right away. Uh, if, if there are any questions, you can just post them on the Q&A uh, that you can see as well. Okay, so, so like Rajiv mentioning, uh, coincidentally, this is also uh, a story that we have built on something called Wicart. It has a chain of a lot of hypermarkets and they're, they're kind of getting into uh, the e-card e space, I would say, uh, where they're trying to create a one-stop online shopping destination for all your home needs. Uh, the CEO is a big fan of data, so he says, above all else, show the data to me, so, which is a good thing in a certain way where the leadership team is kind of driving, driving that culture. And they've created multiple, uh, I would say, small squads where they're saying each of these squads have to be responsible to promote database decision making. So if you remember the exponential learning methodology that I was talking about, the first aspect of that is to create that virtual uh, environment, in this case, replicating that real world. The virtual environment here is the white card, which is a hypermarket scenario. The next important aspect is, okay, as part of this virtual environment, what is the role that you're taking? Now, you're playing the character called Arya. Okay, he's a business development executive in this particular organization. And primarily, he's being the bridge between the business and the data teams. And... Uh, Simple role as part of this uh, squad, what are your, uh, let me say, what is the role that you're entitled to do is you're trying to act as a bridge. You're trying to aid decision-making by, by taking specific approaches in terms of the analysis, asking the right questions and eventually deriving the insights, which will impact on, have an impact on the business outcomes. So there's a small organization uh, or, a, or an org chart that you can see here. As you can see, you're right here, a business development executive. There are the business wings, there are the data wings, you're acting as a bridge, you're throwing different challenges, different scenarios, and how do you kind of navigate through all those challenges, eventually stay on top of it is what forms the crux of the simulation. Now, lastly, uh, while you are understanding what your virtual environment is, what your role as part of this virtual environment is, just like real world again, the last part is, okay, as part of your role, what is your objectives? We are, we are measuring them to through simple, two simple objectives in the simulation. One is called the analysis accuracy meter. It caters to the first two competencies of problem definition and analysis. Are you identifying the problem well? Are you, doing, are you taking the right analytical approaches? Are you leveraging them in the right way? That forms the analysis accuracy. The second objective is business focus. So are you able to derive insights in the right way? And are you able to put them? Are you able to take the right decisions based on those insights? Forms the business focus of it. Uh, keeping the business objectives still uh, in mind. Now, this product is, is, is inbuilt uh, on a platform called Dilo internally in our organization. Now, we have a simulation creation platform called Dilo, which stands for Day in the Life of, uh, wherein just like a real world, there are certain, as part of your role, you have some day to day activities that you are uh, going to encounter, right? So, that's how we created this whole simulation where you're thrown different scenarios and challenges as part of your day to day activities. And within a certain stipulated time, we, uh, we challenge you to navigate through these different scenarios and stay on top of it. Still meeting your database decision making, I would say in simple terms, ensuring that your database decision making score is on the higher side with respect to those four competencies that we spoke of. I'll just skip through this part and directly jump into a couple of scenarios. This is primarily the onboarding uh, that happens for every product of us, just to make sure the, the participants or the learners are acclimatized to the interface. Uh, as you can see, the, the dashboard focuses on the objectives that we spoke about. There's a, late, there's a, there's a bit of a fair bit of gamification angle as well, where you, uh, while you're playing in a cohort, you can compete uh, with the other uh, participants, bringing in that social angle as well. Okay, quickly running through this, uh, we'll, we'll look at a couple of scenarios and then we'll probably, we can probably jump into the, uh, the report as well. Uh, I, I would like to make this a little more interactive. Uh, I would expect some of the audience to throw their responses and let's see how it, how it pans around. So this first, is, uh, I would say, uh, scenario, as you can see, it says, hello, Arya. Uh, it's coming from one of your managers, uh, one of the colleagues manager of marketing, who says, as winter is coming, we are looking to promote seasonal products. 
we need to understand the range of products that should be promoted as part of the hypermarket story that we spoke about earlier. And uh, he tells you we need to get a short list based on last year's data. Uh, data. Can you get the historical data from our data engineer? Can you help me with this exercise? He's requesting for those seasonal products to promote those. Now, how the simulation works is it gives you a set of options uh, and it, it, it elicits those responses from you. And these options are internally connected to your objectives as well as the competencies. There are a certain set of right options. There are also a certain set of wrong, wrong options. And in quite a few scenarios, you don't have a, it's not like just you have one particular right and all the rest of them are wrong. Like, like in real world, there could be three, four decisions that you might take. And one of the decisions might have, let's say, 10% 10x impact, the other decision might have a 100x impact. Okay? There's also multiple positive decisions. Among them, there could be a best option, which is what we are expecting you to choose, which will have the highest impact on the objectives given to you. Now we have four options. I'll uh, request the audience to uh, post their option one, two, three, or four. I'll take you through those four options. Okay. You got the question, right? We are trying to be, be Lara is asking you, you to uh, promote uh, that we need to promote seasonal products and need to get some data out of it. Now, the first option, uh, number one says, okay, I'll request uh, our data engineer to perform a prescriptive analysis and get what you want. This is the first option. The second one says, okay, I feel the promotion should be more focused on bed warmers and scarves uh, as they're usually pro uh, purchased in higher volumes during winter. Now, the third option is, okay, I'll get in touch with Mark, who's our data analyst and ask him to perform a descriptive analysis to create a list of products in huge volumes. Uh, so the last option is, okay, I understand what we're doing to improve our promotion, but I would like to look at more data. I would like to understand the problem a little better to kind of give you more answers. Okay? So first one to talk to data engineers, second one to, uh, to giving a certain direct insight on that we have to focus on a certain elements. Third one to talk about doing a descriptive analysis. And lastly, try to understand the problem. If I can get some responses from the uh, folks, what do you think is the, is the best option here? One, two, three, or four. Okay, I see some people spreading across, okay. 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 I, I think it's a unanimous on, answer, I would say here, uh, where we're getting a clear four. Okay, there are people, one of you folks who are saying three as well, but majority goes with four. Let's see what happens with four. Okay, let me send this response away. You can see there's a huge impact on the analysis accuracy meter. And quite, quite, uh, I would say similar to what we spoke earlier, the reason for that being, now Lara has sent you a request for a certain data and, and with certain assumptions in mind. The first three options, if you see, there are more assumptions, recommendations without any basis at all. The fourth option is where you're looking at trying to understand the problem in a little more detail, trying to get to the root cause and then get into the, uh, the data that you want to show, right? So which is why that becomes the best uh, response in terms of trying to understand, identifying the problem to begin with, and then taking it to the next level. Make sense? Okay, maybe we'll look at a few more. Uh, these scenarios that you look at are thrown in multiple aspects, uh, different forms of, uh, I would say, medium. Uh, the sudden uh, one of the one, the, one of them that we just saw is an email. There are, there's another medium like you see now, which is where you're getting a call uh, that you need to respond to. And this happens in a chat kind of format. Imagine you're just having a conversation in the virtual world with, with another colleague of yours, uh, which is a lot more effective when you're having a chat than just pure an email. And let's look at this one other scenario and then we can, we can give you a quick glimpse of the report before we open up the stage for uh, any more Q&A. Okay, this is this, this response coming from Kavita, another person. Okay, the, the scenario here is, okay, understand the different roles in our data wing, but I'm not 100% sure let me take that back to the question. I'm not 100% sure who should I contact for few of tasks. Like we discussed earlier, right? So identifying the problem, knowing who's the right person to reach out to also forms the basis. So there's a very straightforward question in terms of who do I reach to for these two specific tasks that I have to ensure that to get a customer purchase behavior data during the first week of every month. And the second one is to understand the effect of our uh, quarters promotions in the baby and K category. So I'll keep this open for you to read through the options. Again, one, two, three, and four, if you can give me what would be the best option according to you.
Kalyan, you're on mute. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. okay. There was some uh, echo there. Okay, let me see if I have any options. Uh, so what I was talking about is the fact that this is a pretty, pretty straightforward question in terms of trying to understand who the stakeholders are and who do you need to reach out to to get certain responses. Okay, I'm seeing quite a few of you on uh, four. Okay. Let's choose option four and let's see how that has an impact. And you see there's a different medium, like I said, which is primarily uh, everything that's happening is on the uh, chat window here. There's been a minor impact. There was a better answer there as well. Now, what happens throughout the course of the simulation is that you are thrown these various different scenarios or situations, again, all in the same context, uh, and each of them have multiple threats. So you respond to one uh, with a certain uh, option, there's an impact of it, and there's a, another follow-up response or an option or a question that comes up. Uh, various conversations close to about uh, 20 to 30 conversations that happen over this 20, 30 minutes. Uh, so you're thrown in that, I would say, a serious uh, kind of a scenario where you have to navigate all these and eventually stay on top of the analysis accuracy meter and business focus rating. So that gamification aspect of still meeting your target, like we said, 70% on accuracy and three uh, rating on the uh, business focus. So you need to meet those objectives uh, and eventually uh, navigate towards the entire this course. Uh, just one last thing, just to give you a glimpse of what happens. Similarly, again, every uh, email or every call that you have has various set of options. And like I spoke earlier, these options cater to the different competencies and eventually has an impact on one or two or either of the objectives that you see on the top. Uh, okay, with this, we, we, we get to the end of the simulation. Hope you got an idea, you got a sense of how the simulation functions. Uh, and uh, we're more than happy to take some requests post the session if you, if you are interested in knowing this in detail as well. Uh, we'll next move to a quick glimpse of the report. Just let me give you a preview of what comes at the end of this. Uh, Connecting back to what Rajiv has spoken earlier, we have a mechanism called talent intelligence. It's a, it's a bigger entity for us internally where we do a lot of reporting and analytics, uh, primarily on the simulation products that we have. We cover a lot of data points during the course of the simulation and which, which helps us generate an instant report, right? At the end of the gameplay itself in one click without having to wait for it, a comprehensive one across different products. So what this primarily caters to is we give you an overall score at the end of it. This is primarily uh, focusing on the objectives and the competencies that we have spoken earlier. And we give it on a scale of one to 10. This is uh, an internal uh, uh, let's say methodology that we adopt. For every product, there's a standardized scale of one to 10. And this also takes into account the vast number of un uh, users in our universe or the learners in our universe who would have used our products, played our products. So a scale of one to 10 is a clear indication for you in terms of where you stand, a scale of on a five out of 10 is considered an average, while anything beyond five, we can definitely assume that it is well beyond the average. Okay. An overall score, a brief description of whether you have met your objectives or not. So as you can see, the business focus has met, which is three rating. The analysis accuracy meter uh, target of 70% is not met here. We then jump into specific score for each of the competence. This is where the self-awareness or the reflection element comes into picture. And how did you focus on each of these different competencies that we spoke about earlier? Okay. Again, purely rated on a scale of one to 10. We then jump into specific description about each of these competencies, what you should have, what is the description of these competencies? What does it do? What you should do ideally? And there's a dynamic insight that's given specific to this particular participant or learner based on the score that you've got in the simulation. In this case, a competence score of five gives you a different insight compared to someone else who would have got a 10. And this gives you a deep insight in terms of what you did. And it also backs it with some takeaways at the end, which tells you, okay, now that this is what you scored, this is what you should have done. And you could do, there's something that they take back to the uh, job, I would say, in terms of the organization to improve those scores and get better at it. Uh, so this is what the primarily the report does. And like I said, instant report, uh, the whole uh, simulation is not consumed as an off the shelf thing but we follow a three-part learning methodology. So there's a pre, uh, there's a O and the post as well to the product. We call it the learning, uh, the application and the reflection. So learning is where we give them some, some concepts in terms of data, some basics of data, database decision making, which is taught upfront. 
And then comes the simulation where you're applying that learning. Last but not the least is the reflection, which is through the report and various debrief elements. We talk about what you should do and what's the ideal way of going about this. So we follow this three-part learning structure, which is then combined into different modalities, be it a self-paced format or a virtual instructor-led or an instructor-led format. And that's how the delivery is done to the organizations or to the participants. Good. Uh, hope you, uh, you, you got a sense of what this product is and the report as well gives you a clear glimpse of uh, what comes at the end of it. Uh, with that, I'll open the stage for any q and i I'll, I'll invite Rajiv as well. Uh, if you have any questions on the product as well as any questions in terms of delivery, how do you get in touch with us? Uh, we're more than happy to answer that. Uh, Kalyan, there's one question on the chat window. I encourage all of you to post your questions on the Q&A box. All right, on the chat window, I do see a question. Um, let me see, I'm scrolling up a bit here. Uh, from Anirudh. Uh, who is saying the beginning of the walkthrough Kalyan seemed like an in-basket exercise of an uh, assessment or development center. Are there more database scenarios that follow in the larger simulation which contribute to the reporting scores? So can you throw some light on that, please? Yeah, so absolutely. So like I was saying, the first few uh, scenarios are in a certain format intentionally to get them acclimatized to this format as well. So you would see them a little more, I would say, uh, to put, I would say to put it in easier word, I would say it's slightly on a lesser challenging uh, the options that you would see in the first few scenarios. Uh, and like I said, there are about 20 to 30 different uh, emails that you get through and different threads across those emails as well. So while you navigate towards the fourth or fifth, then as you move forward, these uh, uh, scenarios are, are, are challenges become a lot more complex. Uh, and then you th there's a lot of clear confusion also in the options while you play along. You can see, okay, almost three options seem the right one. Which one do I choose? So that sort of a confusion also is something that we create. And it does become a lot more complex. Uh, as you move forward and different scenarios throw up as well. Uh, Kalyan, I'll moderate the questions for you. Sure, thanks. A question from Arun, who is asking about total duration for all three parts included. Uh, I didn't hear that right, Rajiv. You were saying about the duration yeah, of the- The total duration of the course uh, for all the three parts, the, the part so, of, yeah. Uh, so like I said, the three-part learning structure that I spoke about earlier, they learn, they apply, and they reflect. So typically this this somewhere around two and a half to three hours. So let's say a virtual instructor-led session, the facilitated as the initial piece of uh, the pre, which is the learning, the simulation, which, which goes for around 30 to 40 minutes. And there's a debrief, which also packs at the end. So overall, it's anywhere between two and a half to three hours. Thanks, Kalyan. Uh, there's a question from Monica. She's asking, uh, would you please share the steps post the report is generated for an individual? Sure. So uh, what we do is we, we look at this from an organizational perspective. So once we run a certain program for a, a certain set of audience, we look at the data. We also provide something called a group level reporting. Uh, let's say you have a group of people who are playing this product as part of a program. We also provide a group level analysis or reporting. And then we have a certain, uh, we, we call it the closure report kind of scenario. We talk to the, uh, the organization and then pan out the way for what needs to happen. We have a consulting in-house consulting team who helps you with this approaches based on the group level analysis that comes out of this program. And we provide some set of, a, I would say, individual development plan kind of a scenario for those participants as well. Right, uh, so both Anirudh and Andrew are asking this question. Um, are there quantitative data sets in the simulation that are used as inputs for decision-making? Uh, very minimal, uh, but we, we do have, uh, like I said, a, a series of products that we have in the data space, right? The data visualization interpretation is another product that we have, wherein there, there's a quite a few amount of quantitative data sets that we use as part of the challenges. Uh, this does have, but, uh, but on a minimal side, this more focuses on the uh, decision-making aspect and trying to derive insights of it uh, with a minimal focus on the quantitative data sets as such. Yeah, so just uh, for clarity, just adding on top of what Leon just mentioned, uh, yes, uh, th there are data sets that are provided for decision-making and uh, the focus however here is database decision making, right? So we don't get into the technicalities of um, how do you slice dice data and all of that. It's more about the different types of analytics one can use um, leading to insights, leading to decision making. And that's what this simulation pretty much focuses on. All right, are there any other questions? So I had one question for Goda. So, so trying to make use of uh, her presence here as well for the benefit of uh, all the audience. So in the Glamour framework, uh, Goda, we start with a goal. 
uh, right, and then delivers that impact the goal and so on and so on, right? But in um, an environment where things are changing so fast, uh, right, sometimes the goal itself could uh, get shifted, right? And we live in an UCA world, as people say. Uh, what happens in that case? Um, so does the entire data architecture get revisited? Uh, I'm sure this goal doesn't change on a daily or a weekly basis, but I'm sure quarterly or a, um, you know twice a year maybe, uh, right? Th these goals can get revisited. So what happens to that entire chain of activities within the organization? So uh, first of all, the beauty of the framework is it can be done for as big a goal as what a company has or as small a goal as what you know a particular function or a team has right that said when goals change uh, what happens in glamour framework is we kind of use that framework to break it down into a lot of building blocks in terms of metrics and data information all of that so even if the goal changes what changes is the connections between you know how the goal translates to levers and which lever is connected to what metric and what information but from a comprehensiveness, I don't think things, new things are discovered because of the, you know, the exhaustiveness of the framework in some way. So when goals change, the connections change, but uh, the fundamental work being done uh, does not change so much. Got it. And a follow up to that is uh, today you have different sources of data, right? Newer sources of data emerging, mainly because of, let's say, IoT, we have sensors all around generating a lot of data and uh, GPS location data, social media data, and all of that. Um, so with this explosion of data, what happens uh, within an organization, an organization like Swiggy, which uh, thrives on different sources of data, right? Can you talk about the complexity of running a shop like that? Got it, got it. So uh, for the scale at which uh, Swiggy runs and these different uh, data sources, even location pings, you know, the GPS pings are coming in like every five seconds and 10 seconds in some way, right? So one uh, definite team that Swiggy has invested in is the data platform team, right? A set of data engineers who kind of day in and day out are working on building, you know, what we call as ETL processes. It's like extract, transform and load into the databases who work on this day in and day out in stream processing, in batch processing, and making sure all of the data is flowing into our data lake and is being made accessible to everyone within Swiggy, right? So definitely needs that investment in the data engineering team. Got it, got it. And um, earlier you spoke about two things, right? One, belief in this whole story. Second is the ability to go beyond what the leader says, the hippo and the zebra, and to influence decision-making. Can you talk about that element, uh, even in a, a data rich organization like Swiggy, do you get into uh, influencing or the softer elements of pushing your point of view or influencing people towards a certain outcome? How, how, how does that work from a dynamic standpoint? Definitely. Like, so for example, in the annual planning cycle that Swiggy kind of goes through where you're listing out all possible initiatives, which are like levers in the Glamour framework and trying to see which ones we need to prioritize, what do we need to go after? As a preparation to that uh, annual planning meeting, a lot of the product managers are coming in with estimations of size of price in some way where they are working closely with analytics teams to put together uh, what we call like uh, a PR FAQ, which is like a press release and frequently asked questions, which is like a futuristic view of what happens when this feature is developed, right? So that upfront when you're taking the, making the decision of should we do this or not do this you have the data in place to say you know what will happen if this is done and then uh, it's only about logically convincing what needs to be prioritized and less about who is saying what right and i think that's one of the beautiful things that uh, data centric culture does is it kind of democratizes decision making without uh, hurting on the business impact in some way. Got it. So while uh, logic and uh, a presentation of logic is on, on the one side, there is also the right brain approach people talk about, which is storytelling with data, right? It's not just pure numbers and other things, but how do you convincingly present a story? Can you uh, speak about that aspect as well? How does it work in a Definitely. company like Swiggy? Definitely. In, in, in fact, one of you know the learning skills that you know I actively try to coach my team on is how do you uh, take something that is so in-depth in terms of data and statistics and significance and distributions and convert it into a story that is stating things like facts? Because what the human brain understands is not, you know, there is a distribution and there's a percentile there, but 
this is how much things will move and here is the proof you know or attribution to different factors that can make it work so definitely storytelling skill is not only required for people who are very close to data but somebody who is even consuming the data and influencing someone in leadership to say that you know we need to invest uh, in this particular area definitely i spoke about the top two skill sets this would be just there below that in the awesome that's great uh, there's a question from arun kumar um, learning part of this training is a video classroom delivery before the simulation or is it hand out document shared with participants kalyan would, would you like to address that yeah so just respond to that on chat as well so currently the product is available in a classroom format instructor led virtual instructor led wherein the facilitator is basically delivering the session the learning piece uh, we are in the process of creating a self paced version just like other products uh, we do it as part of the second phase wherein the learning is primarily video based so, and we do have handouts uh, we call them toolkits which we provide at the end of this whole exercise which happens at the end of reflection which is primarily to take it back to the job kind of to put that learning remember the some kind of reinforcement so we do provide those handouts but the core happens uh, through facilitation or through a video based program all right thanks kalya are there any further questions on the product or the program please feel free to ask So, Gudha, uh, back to you now. Um, so, one of the organizational challenges that uh, we come across, especially in a large traditional organization that has been functionally uh, structured, uh, right? It could be product sales, marketing, or it could be retail bank, wholesale bank, and so on. Uh, the end customer could be the same uh, in many of these cases, but because of the functional orientation, they've got a lot of silos within the organization, right? And and this leads to all these entities looking at the customer from a different lens altogether they don't have a single source of truth uh, right and and this lack of collaboration effectively kills any data related uh, project or this take off of the digital transformation uh, initiative within the organization what would be your recommendation for this because these functional silos are historic uh, that's what made this company so successful i guess so how do you dismantle it how do you pave the path towards better collaboration through data okay uh definitely i've seen you know i've worked with a few for example insurance is a domain right where historically it has been running in a certain way for so many years and now there is more focus on you know how can we understand the customer better and tailor our products better but definitely these silos are there right uh one answer to that is you know along with digitization is also more platformization of the truth right where uh, in one of the companies we had invested in this where it we call it a customer 360 right where a 360 degree view of the customer across functions of all our touch points and customer responses you know just bringing the data together into one place and showcase it in get on a centralized dashboard in some way where you can look at the customer across interactions uh, just making that discoverable and accessible uh, led to you know uh looking at other aspects and opening up people's awareness to you know there are more touch points where uh this customer is coming from i think making the discoverable and accessible is the first step there a centralized view of the customer got it sounds good and uh possibly the last question i had gudha for you is uh is you one question from my end if you don't mind yeah yes kalyan go ahead please yeah so uh, gudha i just had one question like you know i was speaking from a uh, fact that we are creating a data series of products and uh, and even something that you were highlighting in terms of the data literacy while we connect data literacy to this different layers one being the data visualization interpretation the data decision making do you again i know swiggy is quite evolved on that front but let's say we look at some traditional organizations as well what according to you could be some of the some of the topics that people pr probably put into as part of a data literacy program um, just to give you an example maybe data governance security privacy and I'll, i'll open this up to the audience as well if they can just type in on the chat what according to them are other series of things on data that are important as part of an organization right right um definitely i think uh, you know there are multiple pillars that come together when we talk about data literacy first part i spoke about was you know just the accessibility and discoverability of the data engineering part of the data second which you touched upon definitely is you know even if you're making it discoverable across organization how do we have the right governance and control on the security of the data 
Uh, third, definitely, is quality of the data, right? Which is uh, part of the data governance as to how do you not make wrong decisions because you know there is problem with the quality of the data. Right? Uh, the fourth part definitely is the metrics part that I uh, spoke about. You know, how do you uh, be able to track your how your organization is doing? Because that's the first step of using the data. Only if you answer how are we doing is when you can go into why and how we can change. Right, that's the beginning of uh, data literacy. The last part is definitely across the organization. For example, even though Swiggy is evolved, we did this internally that you know. We did this basic training to be able to access and query and ask questions and even invested in tools where you can ask like, you know, natural language questions and get, you know, what's happening with the data from the tool, right? So just a skill set to ability to answer a question yourself when you have it. If you provide that to the organization, that's a huge investment in building the data center. Yeah. Thanks for that. All right, so that uh, pretty much brings us to the um, end of this product launch event. Uh, thank you all for participating. Special thanks to you, for, uh, Goda, for bringing all your industry uh, insights and, and basically bringing this to life. Thank you so much for that. Not just with the Glamour model, but uh, you added a lot of interesting um, stories around it. Thank you so much for that. Thanks, Kalyan, for the uh, product walkthrough. Uh, so uh, this is for all of you. If you're interested in talking to a specialist from Nolscape, uh, please do let us know. Uh, we can set up an experience session for you. And um, not just for this particular uh, product on database decision making, as Kalyan mentioned, there is a series of things that we are doing around uh, data analytics, uh, including data visualization and, and so on. Uh, this is something that we are doing at scale for a lot of global organizations, helping them raise the bar uh, when it comes to um, data literacy as part of our digital transformation set of products. Right? There's a separate product we have around uh, raising digital fluency. And as part of that, uh, you know, data is a big part of the digital story. Um, so we are getting in uh, deep into this uh, data series of products. So if you are interested in learning more, do reach out to us. Uh, we're happy to um, give you a, a demo and a walkthrough of the product in much more detail with you and your team members. So thank you so much for your participation and for your time. Thanks once again, Goda. Thanks, Kalyan, for the walkthrough. Thanks, Team Nolscape. See you. See you. Thank you, Aniket. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Sharon.